it's time for Garage Band Weekly here on Studio Live today. Let's do it. Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly, Garage Band, Garage Band Weekly. Whoa. Thank you, Kronk Song. Yes, it is time for Garage Band Weekly here on Studio Live today. I hope you're doing well and you're ready for an hour of Garage Band and Garage Band related goodness if you uh, are. And if you like the video, uh, you can give it a thumbs up. But don't do that yet. you got to wait till the end. I know that a lot of people are like, yay, I will like it. And look, if you're sure, that's fine. Uh, feel free to. But... Feel free to wait to the end. I don't know what's going on with my head today. Um, sounding a bit bizarre, aren't I? I'm, I'm saying weird things. But what is not weird is that this show is brought to you, as always, by the Garage Band Beginner's Guide. Yes, here it is over on uh, the web page, uh, studiolivetoday.com slash courses. And uh, this will take you straight over here to the Garage Band Beginner's Guide. Just $10, five hours, nearly five hours of curated, hand-picked content. Everything from getting started in Garage Band to creating your first project to mixing to mastering to getting your song done and uh, you can get it all for ten dollars and uh, just go to studio live today.com slash courses and it will be right there waiting for you uh well let's get into the news and notes here today we've then got a feature topic we're looking at strings in garage band ios which is one of my favorite things to play around with so that's going to be a lot of fun uh, and uh why follow for follow is such a bad idea in your music. Yeah, I know it's not GarageBand specific, but I've been seeing a lot of disturbing stuff lately around uh, like for like, sub for sub, follow for follow. And I'm going to tell you definitively why it's a bad idea, why you need to steer clear of it. But let's jump into the news and notes to start with. First up, we do have a new iOS update, 15.1.1. I've, de- I've updated most of my devices now to iOS 15, 15.1, and now 15.1.1. So far for me, no problems. So none of the apps that I use have been impacted by any of these updates. I'm pretty comfortable now to say that now is the time. If you've been holding back, I always say that with iOS updates, don't update if you're in the middle of a critical project. Wait until you are at a point where you can actually update. And uh, if something goes wrong, then it's not going to impact you greatly. So uh, now is the time. If you've been holding back, uh, back up all your stuff. Make sure everything's backed up to iCloud or preferably to somewhere else as well. Stick your GarageBand projects on a Google Drive, a Dropbox, a USB stick, something else. And then uh, I think you're going to be good to go and safe to to go ahead and uh, and update your iOS. Um, the uh, other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, we, we talk about our man Patrick over at the Garage Band Guide. Yes, this handsome gent here. And uh, he had some good news in his uh, one of his most recent videos here, which is that uh, Bliss Alpha... So Bleece are a developer that you probably know about. They do the wonderful Shimmer app. They do some great AUV3s like Chorus and Delays and Reverbs and all that sort of thing. And they do uh, they do a synth app called the Bleece Alpha. And it's now available for desktop. So if you are a Bleece user or if you're a Mac uh, Mac mac user with garage van and you're like i wish i could use uh, these bleece apps well it looks like a lot of them are starting to come over to desktop it's a bit strange because usually a lot of developers go from desktop over to mobile but uh, for bleece they are a mobile developer and they're now starting to develop for the desktop which i think is an interesting one because it's usually the other way around so uh yeah you can go and check that one out uh, i've linked to the video well i haven't yet but that's i'm about to do that <laughs> i just realized I, I haven't put the link here in the description so i'm just adding the link to that uh, video go and check it out and the cool thing is that patrick has his own bank of presets in bleece alpha yeah you know you made it when you got your own presets yeah so you can actually get the official garage band guide presets for bleece alpha whether it's on ios or on the mac version of alpha which is pretty darn cool so uh, congrats to patrick on that it's old new old news i know he's, he's had that on um the the mobile version for a long time but in case you weren't aware it's pretty cool um, and I thought I'd just give you a couple of little updates around me. So uh, first up, the MacBook Pro that I've been using, uh, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I now have it on loan from Apple for a full year. So I'm going to be able to put it through its paces and uh, see how things go. And it is just working seamlessly. And I was, I was trying to think about this. I'm like, what, what update will I give? Because the, the thing is, I, I like when I moved from PC to Mac, it wasn't it wasn't revolutionary, it was evolutionary. And the one thing that I think is the best, and Apple won't like me saying this, well they might maybe they will. As much as the power is great, as much as the performance is great, as much as I'm blown away by the M1 chip, both in my Mac Mini and in the MacBook Pro, 
it's just the reliability and I say this and now something will happen and the stream will just collapse or something. But it's it's the reliability that I just, like for this show, for five five minutes beforehand, I plugged in my MacBook, I plugged it into the monitors, I did a quick audio test and then I just hit live. And it just works seamlessly every time. So to me, I think that's the that's the best part of, of being in the Mac ecosystem. And then, you know, obviously the iOS to Mac uh, and being able to share files really easily and just have everything in the one ecosystem that works well too. So for instance, I was um, I was working on something the other day and I'd saved something, I'd exported a GarageBand Mac project and I'm like, oh no, I didn't export that project. I didn't send it over to my phone. But because I use iCloud Drive to store everything, I just went to my phone. And I'm like, oh, there it is. Download WAV file. Okay, we're good. And then off you go. So yeah, I, I think that's been for me the big, the big thing. No blue screens of death, no weird driver conflict things. Just everything is just plug in and it works and it's off to the races. Now, that wasn't always the case. You would have seen that when uh, when the first uh, Mac OS, not Monterey, the last one, Big Sur, came out, I had issues. My Zoom live track didn't have a working driver. I had problems with the webcam settings app. There was a few teething problems, but they're ironing out those things, and I think that uh, it's just making the M1 platform even better, in my opinion. Uh, let's take it out of the folks who are here live, and uh, do do please keep in mind that if you have questions, all you need to do is put the word question at the start of your comment, and uh, more than happy to answer any questions that you may have as we go on through. G'day to Gary Hubs, hello to Frigsy, hello to Jade Star, hello to Thomas Christ, who is here. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, Jade Star says, as always, my only fear is Aurea Pro. So yeah, if, you, if you're an Aurea Pro user uh, or some, what was the other one that someone said? Um, one of the other studio, like FL Studio Mobile, something like that, uh, that that's the, that's the that may still have an issue. So do check with your specific apps. Um, and Thomas Christ says, I took the plunge on 15.1. No problem so far. Yes, knock on all the woods. Uh, hello, Acer. Just got a new Mac, so I'll need to learn the GB interface on it. Well, Yes, welcome. I'll be uh, I'll be along there with you because I'm still learning the interface. It's it's a little bit more menu driven, Acer. So it'll probably I mean it won't be that bad for because I know Acer is vision impaired. It won't be that bad in terms of the menus because they're all quite well labeled. So you've got like the GarageBand menu, the file menu, the mix menu, and you can go to all of those settings. So it'll probably tell you where you're at. So that I think correct me if I'm wrong can actually be better for for um, accessibility rather than buttons because buttons sometimes have images and are not as labeled as well. Uh, Jade says, I'll be waiting an update to iOS 15.2. Only because I have a lot of apps, yeah. And look, it's it's still the it's still the advice. If if it ain't broke, you may not need to fix it. So, and there's no there's no in fifteen point one point one. There's no security update. I think it's a mainly the main fix was that the iPhone twelves and thirteens. There was phone call dropouts that were happening. So there was there's been a fix put in for that. I don't remember the last time I called someone on the phone. Actually, I do. It was my internet service provider because they were about to reduce my upload speed, and I said no, don't reduce my upload speed. So, uh, but that, that was the last time I actually called a, a human person with my phone and actually spoke to them. Uh, hello, Bear. Thank you for being here. Hello, Michael, aka Zealand Band. I was, what, what, why was I talking about you yesterday? Oh, because we were, um, I don't know, someone put a zzz in the chat because it was like, oh, Golden Slumbers. I played the, I played my Beatles show yesterday and I played Golden Slumbers. And uh, yeah, someone put like a zzz sign in the chat. And I'm just like, ah, oh. now I, forevermore, I associate the zzz, um, the zzz, little, what are they called? Emoji with uh, Michael, aka Zealand Band. All right, uh, we're going to jump into the feature topic. Oh, the, the one final thing I wanted to do, and this is uh, this is not uh, a, a peak gloating thing, but I thought this was adorable. Um, uh, we did cross 100,000 subscribers, so thank you, everybody, for all of your amazing support. And uh, I got this from from my daughter. She she uh, gave me a little uh, a little certificate here. So um, I'm just saying you can you can keep your silver play buttons. Uh, I'll be framing this one, and uh, that'll be pride of place over there on the wall, I think. Um, but yeah, that's very cool. Use my my pointing peats. And the weird thing is, the pointing peats that I know annoy most people. I know some people, but hey, they do the job. Uh, that was actually her idea because every time I was doing a thumbnail, I was going and trying to find a good photo of myself. And she's like, Dad, why don't you just have one file that just has all of your different pointing things on it? And then every time you do a thumbnail, that's just your template. And then you just copy one of those and paste it in. And I'm like, because you're smarter than me. That's why. Yes. No, very... Very awesome, uh, and uh, good good job from Jasmine. She's a creative little tyke as well. Yeah, definitely better than, definitely better than a play button. Uh, I, I won't I won't say no to the play button, but I definitely won't. Uh, definitely not going to. Uh 
It's, I don't know. It, it's a, it, let, let's be honest. And we'll talk about it in a moment uh, when we get into the rant after the feature topic. But it is uh, their vanity metrics. Yeah. So it's lovely and it's great. And it was cool. Like on Thomas Christ's uh, You Rock show last week was when we actually crossed over. Uh, we made sure like there was a few people there. They're like, oh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get my friend. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll call someone. I'll get, get, you, get you over there. Because we're at 99,996. And I think we need four more. And Thomas was like, I'm, I'm not leaving. I'm hanging on to this live show until we get to, uh, until we get to 100,000. So that's pretty good. Uh, Asa says, I'll probably have to try and find a guide on how to do things like dropping uh, a loop or a file from the finder uh, on the loop. Yeah, with voiceover. Yeah, it, it, it'll, we'll, we'll see, see how it goes. Let us know. But report back and let us know how things go. Uh, all right, let's move on, shall we, uh, to our feature topic. And we need to fire up. Because um, when thinking about a feature topic for today, I was like, I want to go, I want to go back to, not to basics, but back to a simpler time and, uh, and cover a topic that, uh, cover one of the things that I think is, uh, is one of the cooler, cooler instruments that we have here in GarageBand. So I'm just stalling while I get myself set up and we'll get the screen set up here. I'll do the, uh, do the little cool picture in picture. There we go. That's nice. Picture in picture mode here. So you can see my mug in the corner while we, uh, while we do some. While we do some work. All right. Uh, let's just uh, do a quick sound check, shall we? Drum roll. Oh, I'm using AirPlay. See, I'm glad we do the sound checks. Professional at work here, folks. We'll just unplug and plug back in. And in a jiffy, it should say, yeah, you're connected, John's. Great job. Da -da 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 -da. Cool. So we are connected. We are good to go. All righty. So... The strings in GarageBand are one of my favorite instruments and they are super flexible, but there's a little bit of a learning curve to them. So what we're going to do here today is go through everything you need to know about the strings in GarageBand, but we're afraid to ask. Let's dive in and take a look. So to get to your strings here in GarageBand on iPhone or iPad, you simply need to start a new project and navigate to the strings. Now you can just tap on strings here and it will take you straight into your chords mode where you can start playing chords and you can select all of the different uh, instruments we have here, your violins, your violas, your cellos and your basses, or you can actually individually select them. So this is a, probably the first and the coolest tip is if we want to just work on our basses, we can select bass and then if we tap and move up and down, that's how we actually bow. So, and the thing that probably the biggest learning curve that people have when they start using the strings is as you can see there, see that dot? That's me tapping on there. And when I remove, that's when you get the sound. So a lot of folks are thinking, why is there so much delay with the strings? Well, it's because when you put your finger on there, when you grab your finger, just pretend this red dot's your finger, and you press, nothing happens. It's not until you actually move it that it does that. And to get the, uh, the pizzicato string sound, you tap and then release without actually moving it. Just like that. So... It, once you get the idea that it's not when you tap, it's when you release, you're going to find the strings a lot better. And I thought I'd put that up here on Front Street because that's the one thing that people ask me more than anything. They're like, the strings are always too laggy. And look, yep, some of the different string types are a little laggy. Like the cinematic one, it doesn't, doesn't come in straight away because there is like strings naturally don't hit their peak volume. The attack of a regular instrument, a string instrument, is not straight away. It's not like a keyboard where it hits a hammer. It's actually the bow has to start its progress and then it has to complete it so keep that in mind as well when you're doing the strings oh. <laughs> so the other options we have with strings up in the top left here you can tap on this one and you can go through your cinematic your modern your pop and your romantic so uh, you can select each of these and they'll just have a different type of tone there's your modern strings you got your pop strings which are a bit of a brighter tone and then you've got your romantic strings which are a little bit more subtle so you can choose what type of strings that you want to go with there. Now, let's uh, let's go back to, you know what, I'll, I'll use the, the modern ones. Uh, you might have noticed there that there's custom as well. So if you've actually created, so I've got my own Pete strings here. Can't even remember what I did with those. But if you, if you create your own string presets, you can actually use that one as well. So you've got a couple of options here. You've got the chords and you've got notes. So we're there in chords mode. And this is where we've got the four quadrants down the bottom here. Middle and top. So for each chord, you've got four different, basically, fingerings, <laughs> four different ways that they're actually going to be played. So four different inversions is the word I was looking for, not fingerings, uh, four different inversions of that. 
and you can play those across there. Like everything else, if you want to edit your chords, you can do so. So all of your instruments have an edit chord function. So if you go to the little little settings icon there, you can hit your edit chords and you can actually change what each of these chords are. If you wanted uh, this B diminished to be something really weird, like a B, um, B augmented. Oh, we're going the wrong way. <laughs> it's hard with the mouse sometimes. B augmented six. Well, it can't be a six because it's augmented. Uh, major seventh with a with a C bass. You can have some of the weirdest uh, chords that you're ever going to find. So we hit done on that one. You can also, of course, change your key signature. And if you change your key signature here from, say, C major to D major, all of your chords will change to be in that key, uh, except for any custom chords you've created. It'll keep those. It'll just tweak them into, it'll basically transpose any custom chords up to the uh, the key signature <laughs> that you put it into. So we'll go back to C major just to keep things simple. I love how it looks there. B plus major 7 C. <laughs> <laughs> Looks cool. So we've got everything selected here. The other thing you'll notice here in the chords mode is autoplay. So this works just like all of our other instruments. If you've ever used autoplay on a keyboard uh, or on guitar, you can just select the autoplay and then if we tap. And uh, like some of our instruments, and someone actually reported to me that this isn't working anymore. So let's try it here now. If I tap with two fingers, I should get a different sound. That actually sounds the same. Let's tap with three fingers and see if we get a different sound. That's odd. I thought that we used to have this. So for some of your instruments, you've actually got the four auto plays, but then you've also got uh, the variations where you go one finger, two finger, three finger, and it actually plays each different one. I wasn't aware of that. So uh, I, I wasn't aware that they didn't have that anymore. Or maybe it's a different instrument. Let's just uh, select, maybe if we just select, say, just the first violins, and we'll just tap with one finger. And then two fingers. No, it's exactly the same. So there you go. Who knew? <laughs> Not me. I thought that we did have multiple variations there. This is a learning experience for us all. Now, that's the easiest way to play. And if we wanted to record something in, uh, if we go back, take autoplay off again. If we wanted to record in some sounds here, why don't we start with just the basses and the cellos? So we'll start with... All right, so let's just record in, say, eight bars just to give us something to work around. So we'll hit the record button and we'll play a D minor. A little bit out of time there. Might need to uh, adjust some quantizing. So we'll go back to our track view here. And uh, yeah, so you can see there um, my timing's a little bit off there. But we'll just, we'll play around with this to start with. So the first thing we'll do is just make this an eight bar loop. Just so we've got a little bit more space to work with. Go with eight bars. And... Uh, And that is one of the hardest things that you'll find with strings is to get the timing of those uh, those starting bits right. So well, let's add some uh, pizzicato strings so that we can uh, see what that works like. So we'll add another track here and uh, you can either add here plus there and add it again. Or you can, of course, use the duplicate option. If you've already got it set up and you want to do something similar, tap on that one, hit duplicate. And we've got another string here. So we can then go in here and adjust it. So this time, uh, let's let's grab the top end, the violas and the second. And actually, just go violas and second violins. Yeah, but we'll, we'll do that. We'll just do some pizzicato strings like that. And remember, when you're tapping, it's not till you release that it's actually going to do it. So we'll just try this out here. Let's hit record. Two. Didn't have my uh, didn't have my metronome on there, so uh, what we can do is uh, let's just try that one again. We'll undo that so we can actually get the timing a little bit better with the metronome. Hit record again, hold down, and and yeah, by their very nature, strings are going to feel that little bit lazy, and it's hard if you're used to things being right on the grid and boom, right in the pocket. Yeah, it can feel a little bit clunky when you're uh, when you're using something like this, but uh, it's coming together. So we'll loop that one and uh, 
pop that down like so. The other way to play strings. So once again, we'll duplicate this out here so that we can get another string track. And you can see you can start layering up your strings very nicely here. The other way to play your strings is rather than being here in your chords view is the next level one, which is the notes view. And yeah. Sounds like me when I tried to play the viola when I was a child. Not well. Uh, so here you'll notice you only get to choose one instrument because you're literally playing that instrument. And this is good if you're a if you're a virtuoso like Dan Bacon, you actually know how to play the uh, the violin then this would be pretty cool for you. For me, not so much, but just a few tips of how this all works here. So it's very similar in terms of how, how you play this. If you just tap and hold, this time it's when you actually hit the string that it actually starts. And you can see there that you've got your, your guide dots. The strings people will tell me what guide dots actually, fret markers, no, I don't even know. <laughs> they don't have frets, you have a fretless instrument. So you can play there. To play an open string, you tap right down there. So right here across the bridge, I guess no that's the I don't know across the 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 bar there that's going to be your open notes so if you're playing that now you do have the ability to hold down on this and again someone's going to tell me what that's actually called and if you hold that with one hand now you can actually play pizzicato so you can pluck the strings by tapping and holding and now it's when you release like so so when you release it is when it plays that string sound. So why don't we just try and play a little bit of a cello part to go with this. So I'm just going to... Let's just play a bit of something like that. We'll try it anyway. <laughs> So I play those same notes over and over again to show you deliberately so that I can show you how easy it is to actually edit your notes here. So like every other MIDI instrument, the beautiful part about using the strings is that to edit, all you need to do is go in here, tap, and then hit the edit button. Or as we learned, as a tip that I got from another user, if you use two fingers and you just tap and slide down, it opens up your edit window immediately. Did you know that? I only just learned that and I've been using GarageBand for years. So uh, we can come in here and we can just adjust the notes so we can actually put it back in so these notes will actually match up with what we're playing originally like so You can see it's very easy to start getting yourself something going on here. Let's try a bit of more of a uh, funky lead part here by grabbing our violin. So we'll duplicate out again. We'll come in here to our strings once more. And this time we're going to go for the violin. And sounds amazing, right? No. So what I'm going to do is instead of messing about with this, because we're playing this kind of in a major scale, what we can use is the scale button. So if we tap on scale here, we can put this so that it's in the major, the major pentatonic, the major blues. Maybe the blues scale might work for something like this. No, it's probably going to be more the pentatonic because it's more of a standard. Let's just see if we can play something along with this, because you can see here it's instantly much easier to play when you can be right in there. You don't have to worry about being right on the uh, on the correct spot to be in tune, and uh, it does all of the work for you to get you into the right scale. So let's hit record and just uh, try something, shall we? Two, one, three, four. So that was okay, uh, but the pentatonic didn't quite work there. So we're going to have to do some mild editing here just to make sure that, because uh, it, it starts on a minor, that's where the pentatonic didn't really fit in there. So let's just play it back and we'll just adjust a couple of these notes to create our melody. So I think that's the first one we need to change. That's 
better. Really only that one note. It's really that just that one note that was uh, in the minor when it was coming from the minor into the major that didn't work with the pentatonic. So it's pretty simple to start building yourself out something here. Now we haven't used the the autoplay very much, so why don't we see if we can if we can put a full string section in here underneath that we use autoplay for. So uh, what if we just go with autoplay number three? And that might be a little bit too intense. What about number two? Yeah, all, all a little bit on the intense side, aren't they? That one might be better. Let's try this one. Let's see if this is going to fit in with what we've already done. Two, three, four. That's sort of coming together. <clears throat> now we haven't done any sort of mixing yet, so we do need to do that. Let's pull out our thing <laughs> here, our volume slider, and we'll drop the volume of that overall one. We want the violin to come up a little bit, uh, maybe drop the volume down of some of these lower instruments, the cellos here, and uh, let's do a little bit of panning, shall we, as well. So uh, this first one here is... So that's our low. What we'll do is we'll uh, we'll pan these. We'll come in here. We'll pan these ones over to the right, and then we've got these pizzicato, which we'll put over here on the. So those on the left, those on the right, and we'll loop out these middle ones, and we'll leave that in the middle because that's kind of our bass sound. And then we've got uh, the. Actually, we'll, we'll grab that one. So we'll put this on the very far right and all this business over on the left. Is this going to be too left heavy? bad the you here for those that are really into your timing you'll notice that the timing is a little off now it can be a bit hit and miss here trying to use quantization for your timing but we'll give it a shot shall we so we'll go into our uh, quantization settings Whoop, wrong, wrong spot we'll go in here to the track settings and quantization and um see because one do, 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 do. it's probably a straight quantization isn't it so we'll just put maybe a 16th note quantization. Why don't we just try this? Let's see if 16th note quantization on all of these will just tidy and neaten them up a bit. Or the other option is it's going to sound like an absolute dog's breakfast. So let's, uh, let's see if quantization is going to help us out here. I reckon that's better. So it's just a little bit thin on the, uh, so because we've got that violin over on the right, I think we just need a complementary lead instrument. So we probably need a second violin. We'll duplicate this out and grab a second violin to go here on the left to finish off this piece. So, uh, and this time, why don't we, why don't I try and play on the actual violin? I'm going to give it a go. I'm just going to do a very simple violin sound here. Let's, uh, let's see if I can actually play on the violin itself. Uh, give, me, uh, give, me, give, me, give me hope. <laughs> now that sounded like when I was learning to play. So the answer is a resounding no, especially not with a mouse. And uh, while live, uh, it's not something that's going to be a happening thing. So no. We can't do that. Uh, so we'll go back to our scale, but this time we'll just go to the regular major scale. All right, we'll just play along with something like this. Ready? Three, four. Yes, turn Pete's violin violin down a tad, would you? I know, right? That that was always the uh, <laughs> that was the thing. Uh, did anyone play in bands where you just 
almost pretended to play or played so softly you're like no one will hear me if i do it well or if i do it badly and i'm like what if we there was a whole band full of people that were playing like that <laughs> it wouldn't work out so well would it all right so we wanted to balance this so we got that one on the right uh oh do we have these two violins i want one on the right one on the left so we'll put this one here over on the left and now we should have a bit more of a balanced kind of full string sound let's uh, take a listen I think that's actually not too bad. I think this is something that you could build out with a few different sounds and things in there. The the one final tip that I wanted to show you here, let's just go back to the strings and make sure we've shown everything. So just to, to recap, you got your chords mode, you got your notes mode, you can select which you are and aren't using up the top there. If you want to have some nice legato, you can do that. If you want to get a pluck, you can do that. You can turn your autoplay on and of course have your autoplay sounds, you can use the notes mode. So you can choose which one you want and you can uh, tap. And the other thing is that you can tap and hold over here on this one here and you'll get a pluck sound. The one thing I didn't show you is that while this mode is engaged, you can actually also do some gentle bowing. So just tap and hold and you'll see there where it's engaged. And then as you move up and down, you can actually get that there. You've got your scale button here, so you can go to your different scales, so you don't need to know all of your different notes here, which is a relief for people like me on the uh, strings. And the one final thing I'm going to show you with strings is if all of that's too hard, if you're like, Pete, I don't want to mess around with that interface, I just want to use my keyboard. Well, you sort of can. You sort of can use the keyboard. So if we hit plus here, and instead of strings, we go over to your keyboard, uh, like this one, then we can go to the more sounds button here. And if you go all the way back to the start and go to other, and then what you'll notice here is you don't have individual string instruments, but you've got pizzicato, staccato, and sustained strings. So if we select pizzicato, for instance, we've now got So you've got uh, the option to do that. You can go into chords mode here, so you can, oh. And we do have autoplay once again. And you can uh, so this one does have the multiple auto plays. There, that's cool. I didn't. So it's it's in this one that you can actually have the multiple auto plays that you have there. Uh, we Jade's saying we do have the strings, so you can go to other. You don't have to go to other. You can go to strings. Can you? Is there a separate strings one in here? I'm not aware. Uh, you can have a play around with that and, and work it out. But uh, yeah, I've always used it in the other there to, to get to your strings. You've got your staccato strings, which are just a slightly different kind. And then you've got your uh, sustain, which are more of your legato. which is a good sound to have. And again, in these ones, you do have your own attack and release, so you can get a lot closer. But they can sound a little unnatural if you've got your uh, release too low. So you might you might want to add a little release there where you can do that. So uh, that is strings. That is uh, everything that you need to know and we're afraid to ask about your strings. They are fun. There's a bit of a learning curve with them, but it's really interesting and a really cool way to uh, add some flair and some flavor. And uh, if you're thinking, if you're on the fence and you're like, but I do rock music, but I do uh, punk music, whatever, you'd be surprised how many times strings, even as a pad, even just using a string pad can sit under your your music. So I uh, hope you enjoy that one and let me know how you go with your strings uh so what where was it in the actual virtual strings and the midi keyboard works now uh in the actual oh does it okay i didn't know that oh, oh a midi keyboard so not uh okay so not not the on-screen keyboard but you can use a midi keyboard with strings can you uh do i have one handy Man, I just put it away. I had my MIDI keyboard right down here for like the longest time and I put it away. It's over there now. I can see it from here, but maybe if we've got time, maybe we'll pull that out. Uh, you could also use a MIDI controller on the strings instrument, Mason. You see, yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, I should have mentioned that. Should have mentioned the MIDI, but there you go. That's why you folks are here, is that you can add the information that uh, you do that. Um, yes, uh, so I actually love the new way they've implemented the multiple fingers on the autoplay. Makes sense now, adding and subtracting fingers, yeah. 
you've all got your digits. Um, yeah, so that, and they definitely don't have autoplay, like the three different modes of autoplay. I wasn't missing something there with the strings, was I? They, they don't have the, uh, in the chord section here, these autoplays are only one per per thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I just, I'm just a guy at a place. <laughs> but again, that's why we do this stuff live and why we throw it out there. Exactly. Uh, you can still add fingers. So you can add multiple fingers. Does it do it? Um, as I wrote about, the multiple fingers work just differently. Just one at a time. Huh. Okay. Well, I'll have to experiment with that and play around because for me, I couldn't, couldn't work it out. To, is it just for like one instrument at a time? I don't know. Well, we'll get there. It's fine. Chicken. Have much microphone. Hello to you. Uh, where were we at? So that was our strings. Ah, so I'm going to go, uh, we're going to pivot over into our rant of the week. Then we've still got some, oh, we've still got plugins of the week and a tip of the week as well uh, to go here. But if you do have questions, uh, I have some of the answers. <laughs> you can just put your questions with question at the start of the comment and I'll be happy to try to answer anything I can. So, I wanted to talk about, I, I joined a group, and I won't mention the name of the group, but I joined a group and it's a promotion group, because I thought, I wonder what people are actually doing in the world of promotion, and it is terrible, it is really bad. Every post is, hey, drop your links, uh, I'll get you on the radio, want to get on a playlist, want to, like, none of it is about actual promotion it is all about either dropping links and getting onto onto playlists which i don't and no one mentions what playlists they are or what radio station they are or the worst ones are hey i'm this person come and follow me and i'll follow you so follow for follow like for like sub for sub there's a lot of different words for it but it all means the same thing which is hey let's let's grow together now, before you go, oh, but Pete, isn't that good? Shouldn't you be supporting the community? Yeah, 100%. So when I was doing uh, Your Music Live, which is a show I do here on the channel where I play independent music, people were listening to other people's music and then they were saying in the chat, oh, this is really cool. I'm, I'm totally going to subscribe to you on YouTube so that I can follow your stuff. And then that person would be like, oh, totally cool. Do you create music? Yeah, I do. I'm this. And then, oh, okay, cool. I'll go check you out. I'm not talking about that. That is cool. What I'm talking about is just blanket subscribing to someone's channel so that they get a number on their on their subscriber list and you get a number on yours. And it's the same, if not worse, for things like Spotify and Apple Music and anywhere, Instagram, anywhere where you've got these metrics that are vanity metrics, if you're doing like for like, sub for sub and uh, follow for follow, there's a couple of problems. Number one, it's probably against the terms of service of the platform you're using. So you can actually get your account suspended or banned or removed for participating in it. And number two, the best case scenario, the best thing that can happen is that you build up your numbers. But here's the problem. Let's let's take Spotify. Let's say, oh, it'd be great to have all these followers on Spotify. Say instead of having 100 followers, you do, you do this follow for follow in a couple of Facebook groups and you've got 1,000 followers. But those extra 900 are not listening to your music. Only the original 100 that you had that are actually fans of your music are actually listening to it. The other 900 are completely inactive. Well, here's the problem. All of the platforms, every single social media and social interaction platform from Spotify to Instagram to Facebook to YouTube looks at engagement. They don't look at pure numbers. They don't look at how many followers you have and get all impressed. They look at engagement. So if you have 1,000 very disengaged users, then they're not going to promote your music. They're not going to push out your content to a lot of people because to them, it looks like you're putting out this stuff and nobody's watching it. Not even the people that are subscribed to you or that are following you are listening to your music or are watching your videos. So why would they promote that? Why would they push that out to other people to try and help you grow? So that's the biggest problem I see here. And when I see people out there yeah, like soliciting subscribers and soliciting follows. And I'm thinking it's really not going to work out well for you because it's going to look, it's going to appear on the surface that you've got this rapid growth, but the the algorithms underneath, the, the robots that are out there trolling the, the different platforms, they're going to know about it. Like they're going to realize that that's not actually a real number. So be very, very careful with that. Uh, try not to get involved. And, and the, the drop your links ones, look, they're, they're usually not dangerous. So it doesn't actually do you any harm. If you're like, someone says, hey, drop your links and I'll put you on a playlist. And you put your link there and they go, oh, okay, cool, I'll put you on a playlist. 
but it doesn't really help either. It doesn't really do much. Like, no, I haven't seen anyone that's like, oh, I got, I got put on this random playlist and now I'm getting a thousand plays a day. Uh, it doesn't really work that way. And the, the other problem is what you usually find is you'll put your link on there and then suddenly, guess what? Oh, look, an unsolicited message in my uh, private messages. Someone's sliding into my DM saying, hey, did you know I can get you a thousand Spotify listens uh, for only $10? Yeah, stay away. You've been, you've been warned, and uh, yes, and, and get off my lawn, because <laughs> I'm an old man, apparently, <laughs> but you need to get off my lawn. Um, hello, Mark Tilling host. Ah, welcome. I don't get into these chats very much, but I like to learn. Good to have you here, my friend. Thanks for dropping on by. Uh, I think that we should have another live episode about music scams and stuff like we did earlier this year. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we'll probably do that, because I just see too many people, and look, there's, when there's a marketplace like this, like music, um, where there's people that are potentially going to be vulnerable, the sharks are going to be out there. They're going to smell blood and they're going to get in the water and they're going to try and target people. It's the worst possible thing. To me, these are the worst criminals. These are worse than people that are going in and robbing a bank. These are people that are taking advantage of people's desires to to get popularity and to get their music heard, which is not a problem. Like All of us want our music heard, but people that take advantage and, and take uh, take someone who's vulnerable and just wants their music played and then does the wrong thing by them, yeah, really dislike it. Not cool. Hey, Betty S. Uh, just wanted to say thank you. Started watching you lately and you gave me the courage to take five of my partner's old songs, giving them new production with this cool software. Very cool. That is always great to hear. Uh, it, it's the best thing. <laughs> I, missed, uh, I missed how that rant started. <laughs> you, you, were, you were getting uh, like for likes. Um, uh, it was... Yeah, so many music scams around, and uh, yeah, they're targeting the vulnerable. Uh, get, getting on Spotify playlist does work through my FMC streams this year, which was massive due to being on 49 Spotify playlists. Oh yeah, it's the thing. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the actual playlist, like there's a reason that people are scampering and that every distribution strategy says that you should submit to legitimate playlists because that's the thing. There's a huge, there's a massive difference there between getting on a playlist that is by a respected person on a respected platform versus, yeah, um, whatever, I was going to make up a name there, but I can't think of an offensive name off the top of my head, but Spammy McSpamerson56 that says, yo, drop your links, uh, I've got a fire playlist. Well, no, sorry, Spammy McSpamerson, you don't have a fire playlist. Uh, FMC are probably on a bunch of actually cool and reputable playlists from curators that people trust that are going to put good music out there. So yeah, you can, there, there's definitely exceptions and uh, there are, there is a reason why you should do it. And that's why if you're, if you're releasing your music and you do want to try and get the best possible promotion, then using DistroKid or, or whatever platform you use, but I use DistroKid and using the Musician Plus plan or a plan that lets you set your release date is really important because if you do want to try and promote your music and get on the front foot, if you put your music out there just straight away, you don't have the chance to submit to these big playlists. And I, I haven't investigated a lot of them, but I always recommend a guy by the name of Damien Keys. So if you want, if you do want to do the the, the actual positive promotion and look, it, it's hard work. It, it's not. There's no easy fix. You don't just go to every Facebook group you can find and uh, drop your link in every post from every promoter that seems to to be trying to do something. But if you do want to learn, uh, I would go to Damien Keys and uh, check out some of his stuff about his release plans. He's got one, I believe it's called the Twenty Day. How many days is it these days? He, he does a different one every year. Uh, oh, here he is. So here's our man, Damien Keys. Let me see if I can find... Uh, oh, oh, there it is. The 21-day release plan. I just saw it and then I went away. I'm going to have to search. Damien Keys release plan. And he gives a lot of good information. There you go. The single release. So 10 months ago. So it's probably due to do another one there. But how to release a single in 2021. The 21-day plan. And it's a really good video because it goes through all the different things that you need to consider around your promotion in social media, around uh, getting your, your music released, around how to time everything out to actually build up that kind of and generate some hype. It's what I don't do well. If I want to, uh, if I want to actually get my music out there, uh, if, I would spend more time doing that sort of thing. But um, I don't know. I, I focus more on the creation side, but that's because that's what this channel is about. It's about creating, recording, and releasing. Yeah, probably need to go with a little bit more detail on the uh, on the, the the release side. 
Um, let's see. Uh, so, uh, so I, I feel like music should promote itself. Uh, at some point, the song needs to come first before the promotion. If it's good enough, it will grow on people. Yeah, yes, agreed. Um, you do sometimes need to give it a chance to get out there too. So there's nothing wrong with, like, it does need to be good music. You're right. You can't, you can't polish a turd. If it's, if it's not a good song, it doesn't matter how much promotion you do, it's still not going to resonate with people. It still has to be good music. Absolutely. Um, I signed up to four pages after Tom's show on Friday. I have listened to them all. Yeah, and that's exactly what... That's why shows like Ron's show and Tom's show and, and Your Music Live are great because you're actually hearing music and you're like, I really dig that. I'm going to go listen to that music. So th that is the, the positive way. That's the way to go. Uh, yeah, there is. There's so much good stuff out there. You've got to get heard. Visible playlists are the way to go. Uh, I have to say that the District in Spotlight playlist was pretty poor for me. I was on it for two weeks and got 16 streams. Yeah, so not, not all playlists are created equal. Um, I, I disagree. There's a ton of bad music people need to sift through and find good music. Uh, it's a double-edged sword, yeah. In today's world, anyone can make music, but that also means literally anyone can make music. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. The, the two genres that have solid active playlists are uh, hip hop and metal. Yeah, exactly. We're very, very invested communities. Spot on. Yep. It does. It, a lot of it just depends on the, uh, the, the communities uh, and, and the type of music you're creating. There is some music that is just not popular. Uh, I'm sorry, but Satish Robertson creates some fantastic music. He's a trumpeter and he creates fantastic music. And look, his music sort of, he does a lot of sort of 80s kind of funky, solely kind of uh, stuff now, which I think is becoming more popular again, that sort of new wave explosion that's happening. So maybe I'm speaking out of, out of turn here, but yeah, the different genres of music. If he put out a jazz album, like, uh, there's not a huge market for jazz, but there is a massive market for hip hop. There is a not as big, but probably more passionate market in metal music. So it really does depend. But uh, do you want to make music for, for what people do, for, for what the, your audience want, or do you want to make the sort of music you want to make and then find your audience? The, the beautiful part about the, the, the internet in 2021 is that there's so many different groups. It's such a diverse range of groups and you can actually get out there so back in the day when when jade and myself and frigsy and all of us uh um i was going to say elderly <laughs> us uh mature folks that remember the days of you know pr printing your cds or your demo tapes and then putting them in the boot of your car and driving around you could only only people in adelaide knew who the heck you were whereas now uh not only australia but the whole world and wherever you are in the world you could be you could be the metalhead hippie sitting there in, uh, in alaska and you could have a show that goes around the world to everyone and uh, everyone can tune in so yeah it, it, we do live in the future and the positive side of it is it's really good but i think as, as someone mentioned there in the chat um the barrier to entry being lowered means that anyone can make music which also means that anyone can make music so it does mean that um back in the day there was a bit of a uh, i guess a quality gate that you had to get through uh before you could actually do it or if there wasn't you had to either be yeah, really good <laughs> really talented or really rich whereas now you don't really need to be either to get your music out there, which does mean that sometimes there's some lacking in quality. And uh, I think as someone said there, a lot more to, sh to sift through to find the uh, the needles in the proverbial haystack. I was on the punk playlist. Maybe I've been found out. There you go. <laughs> nice one. I like it. Uh, but yeah, there's no, no harm in trying these things. But again, I just want, I want to put it out there for folks to be careful because I've seen too many people get uh, you basically get taken advantage of and people have lost it. So if you, if you think this isn't that serious, um, DistroKid and Spotify, like, so Spotify uh, made DistroKid remove something like 10,000 songs or it might have been more than that, 100,000 songs just last year because of fake streams. So there was a bunch of people, they were basically offering using bots and using very low paid uh, people sitting in server, in farms, not server farms, but like call center farms. And they were just sitting there streaming people's music and, and generating fake streams. Uh, this can be actually identified because they can use IP addresses. They can use all, they're smarter than us, right? The, the, usually the platforms are smart enough. They hire the very expensive people that can actually work this stuff out. So there are people and you can go and check it on the DistroKid forums that were crying in their wheat bix because they'd suddenly they had all these streams because they paid for them and then suddenly they're like, oh but dude but i just used this guy and then it was that guy so yeah you can't your defense can't be i didn't know that the guy i paid 10 bucks for a thousand streams wasn't legitimately streaming wasn't getting legitimate streams but dude you knew right and unfortunately it's either ignorance or it's um or you knew and ignorance is not a defense in uh, in pretty much any any court of law 
Uh, yeah, exactly. As Jade said, D don't do this either. E either? <laughs> don't do this either. Uh, people releasing their... Yeah, so that's why um, you'll notice now that Spotify, especially in Apple Music, have really cracked down that to the point where sometimes they'll reject it even if you remove it. If you just need to like fix the audio on a track, if you remove it and then try to re-upload it with the exact same metadata, it'll say, nah, you've already released this before. Uh, and they will, they'll actually get blackballed. Exactly. So uh, the artists that are trying to do that, because that's what, that was another strategy that people were using. They were trying to get their music released. Let's, let's say you make a song, we'll bring it back to GarageBand. Let's say you make a song in GarageBand and then you release it uh, and you put it out there. So I'm, I'm Pete Johns uh, and this song is called um, Perfect. And then I'm like, ooh, that tanked. No one's streaming it. Didn't get on any playlists. All right, pull it down. Now I'm going to release it as Pete Johns Perfection, but I'm going to put the exact same everything in there. Yeah, no. The platforms are now saying, nope, you can't do that. Or sometimes they were just not changing anything. They were just pulling it down, waiting, putting it up for like two weeks' time, resubmitting it to a bunch of playlists. Didn't work, pull it down. And then some were even changing the artist name, so they were creating a secondary account, changing the artist name and resubmitting it that way. And it's like... Yeah, can you imagine if that was the way back in the day? It's like, yo, dude, my, my name's uh, my name's Bon Jovi, and this is our song, and this is our uh, album, Slippery Went Wet. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, now we're John Jobly, and this is our album, um, Hazardous Weather Conditions, and try to release yeah, this is, No, not a thing. It doesn't work. Don't do it. All right. Sorry, I know we got off onto uh, a weird tangent there, but yeah, and exactly, it does really suck for the rest of the honest folks. But again, the uh, the, the people doing the wrong thing are being caught, um, and the the the, the net is is cracking down on them. Very bad. Uh, all right, plug in or app of the week. Um, I was going to show these in a bit more detail, but uh, we're we're really low on time, so. I'll actually hold off uh, the this this one. I'll, I'll just mention it here, and then we'll go, we'll do a deep dive next week into it because we're really short on time here. So if you are using YouTube, and the fact that you're watching me probably on YouTube now means that you probably are, and if you're releasing your own music, make sure that you've, as well as having the original YouTube app, which is what you can use to actually upload your videos and obviously watch videos, grab yourself this app to YouTube Studio. They've just recently given it a really big facelift and they've really updated it. I'll, I will show you it real quick here because uh, there's just a few things in here that I wanted to show you uh, that I use that make it really handy. Um, I'm going to load it up here on my iPad. And in fact, what I'll do, I'll go in. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, okay. I'm here. <laughs> I'm in my... Um, I'm in my. I'll, I'll show you my my regular account. I was gonna. I was going to show you on um, my studio live yesterday because it's a brand new one and it's actually cool to sort of look at some of the stats of that. But um, the the YouTube Studio app, uh, you open it up and it looks a little bit like this. This is it on my iPad, so you can uh, use it on the iPad or the iPhone. You've got all of your the the analytics up the top there. You've got all of your different videos that you can actually add here. All the comments that are coming in. So there's one from Clayton von Kluge and some other folks there. But you've also got a whole bunch of, of tabs down the bottom here for your content, for your analytics, and the coolest one, the one that I use all the time, when people say, how do you make sure that you respond to every uh, comment that you get, is this one, the comments tab. Because this gives you the ability to come in here and see how we've got these, um, these filters up the top here? We can actually make sure. So this is all comments that are published that I haven't responded to. So this is the work that I have to do is respond to these. So I got quite a few over the last day that I need to catch up on after this show. So and as I answer these, then it actually will knock those off there and I can actually go back. So to me, that's a really cool way to make sure that if anyone's commented on any one of your videos, and it doesn't matter if it's a video from today or yesterday or a year ago, it'll put it here. And as long as you come up here and it, it defaults to this anyway, but you can come up here. You can even change it around. So you've got other things here where you can search, you can filter by subscription account if you only want to respond to people with more than 100 subscribers. I don't know why you would. Everyone's important. Uh, so yeah, it's a really good and really easy way to actually do that. And uh, maybe when we've got some more time, we'll go into the analytics because you can get lost in there because there's a lot going on. Uh, but yeah, that's where you can find out the engagement, where your audience are from. Uh, but we'll, we'll take a really quick look here. I just have to, there's some things that I'm not allowed to show you. I'm a, I'm a dentist. So I'm not allowed to show you my face on television. No, not true. Uh, but if we go with... Um, Let's see. I think I can show you this one. No, I can't. I, I better not. Um, I better not because there's some... I can show you like my overall sort of CPM and my click-through rates and things, but I can't sort of show you specific stuff for specific videos because that's, again, part of the YouTube Terms of Service. And the last thing I want to do 
considering that YouTube are basically my employer, last thing I ever want to do is do something that could jeopardize that. But um, I'll, uh, I'll do a video on that if folks are interested. But uh, just dive in there and there's really cool things. You can look at how many impressions you're getting. So how many people are offered to watch your video, how long they watch for. Each individual video, you can see when people are dropping off. So if you're creating a song or you're creating a music video and there's a bit in there where suddenly everyone stops watching, you can be like, oh, maybe I won't do that in my next video. So it's, um, it is, it's, it's an essential for creators and uh, hopefully they'll keep yeah, and they're getting close so I was very critical of the the YouTube studio app because it was nothing like the desktop version whereas now you can get almost everything in the the iOS version that you can and actually I'll give you one one final final tip here um, I'll just come over here to my browser so if you, I use the Chrome browser, I think it works the same in Safari, um, but I'm gonna go with, with Chrome here. What you can actually do is go to uh, Studio. So if we go to the Chrome browser, I'll just type it in and then I'll bring this across. Studio.youtube.com. And what it'll do, oh, hang on, why is that? I've got the dog. I've got the dog with the cords. What have I done wrong here? <laughs> That's less than ideal. Studio.youtube.com. It's not working. Well, that's just great. <laughs> Usually what it comes up with is an option to either go to the website version or to, oh, it's really not gonna work. So uh, here I was saying that everything was working so well. Uh, you, you are using an unsupported browser. Ah, oh, that's weird. Maybe I haven't updated my Chrome for a while. Okay, but uh, yeah, what you basically do is go to your browser and then go into desktop mode and you can actually see uh, a lot of lot more of those desktop components if you open up in desktop mode. Yeah, that's, that's so weird. I'll skip, to, hang on, skip to YouTube Studio. There, there was an option there to skip to YouTube Studio, but I don't know why. I must, I must not have upgraded my Chrome lately on my iPad. Go figure. Should, should have those auto updates uh, on. The other app that I wanted to show you is one that's free at the moment and uh, it is called Vinyls. And look, it's 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 nothing. It's nothing amazing, but it's it's a it's a cool app, and it's free. So it's normally five dollars, uh, and at the moment it's free, and it's the first time it's been free. It's a, it's a it's a player. So if you are like, it's called Vinyls. If you like your vinyls and you like uh, having the ability to visualize something on your screen while you're playing it, this thing's actually pretty good. So I've been uh, I've been messing about with it. Uh, I've got a link to it down in the description and uh, you can come in here. Let's just go in and we'll grab it. It automatically brings in uh, your iTunes library here. Uh, I believe that you can add in other things. I haven't played with it enough, but if we just go here and we uh, hit this Gary Hubs. I just love the way that you, you go to it and uh, it'll give you like the albums there and you can, uh, who else, the Chandler Brothers. It just gives you the little record and like opens it out like that. Uh, so let's 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 play a little Gary. So if we if we tap on that, do we what do we do? Do we uh, oh we just hit the play button? I was like going oh can I take the record and drag it over there and put it on the put it on the player? No, we just have to hit play. But we could do that, and then we're getting some elbow. Cream. And it's pretty cool visualization there, right? So you get to see the spinning going on there. Uh, there's a bunch of settings in here, so you can change up. You can have a plain background like that. You've got disc glow that you can put on there. Uh, what else do we have? I thought there was... Yeah, that's it. So it's, it, look, it's, it's, it's just a fun app. My mind goes <laughs> yeah, there you go. Gary Hubs is getting dizzy. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, if you've got if you've got songs on your your iPhone or your iPad, rather than being in the Apple app with all of its uh, bits and pieces that uh, I don't like, so uh, yeah, there's another option. It's kind of cool and it's free. So uh, wh whenever I see a free app like that from a developer that's doing good things, why not just go and download it? So vinyls, it's uh, linked in the description. Don't say I don't never give you nothing for free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final uh, final thing that I wanted to talk about here. Uh, this is our tip of the week. And I'm uh, just going to go back to here. Right. So, so buttons. Let's just move this across so that you can see all of my screen. Right. So, GarageBand has a whole bunch of additional sounds here in the sound library. So, when you open GarageBand, you can go to the sound library. And here is all the packs that you can actually download. There's a heap of them. There's like 50 of them that we've got in here now. But it can be a little bit difficult to manage, especially if you're using a device that has lower storage amounts. So, let's show you how we can actually manage these. So, you'd probably be aware that you download a pack. We tap on it here. Let's just delete this one. 
so that I can show you how it works. So if we didn't have this uh, Ultimate 808s pack, we would tap on it here. You can either preview it, hear that 808 sound, and then just hit the get button and it's gonna download this to your library. So that's cool and it's very easy to do, but there's so many packs now that it can be difficult to manage. So what have GarageBand done? Well, they've gone and popped this up here, your manage packs options. So if we tap on that one, we can now actually see all of the installed packs. So I can see that I've got three gigabytes, 3,170 megabytes to be precise, of installed packs. So you can see exactly how much space those are taking up and you can come down here and any that you don't have, so I've removed these, you'll see the little get button next to. So you can just hit the get button there and there you go. That'll start downloading those, which makes it really simple. If you want to do some management, so you're like, you know what? I'm never going to use the Skyline heat pack. You can hit the edit button here and you can literally just tap on these and delete. So just like you would any other apps or in anything else, you can do this, Prismatica, if I want to delete that, you can do that and it goes away. I wouldn't recommend it because Prismatica is awesome. And then once they're deleted, if you go down to the bottom, it pops them down here. So you always know the ones you don't have in your regular packs here are gonna be down the bottom there. And the exact same thing for your artist and producer packs. So if we uh, hit the edit button here and say we get rid of Mark Letary, which I, again, I wouldn't recommend because it's a cool pack, then it pops it straight to the bottom there and you can just hit get again. So it just gives you a quick and easy way to visualize all the packs rather than going through here and tapping each one and working out if you have it or don't have it. Just go to your manage packs, scroll down on through and make sure you've got everything. Or if there's packs you're not using, you want to save some space, you can delete them and you're good to go. So handy as, um, because yeah, it is getting out of control. The number of packs that we have now in GarageBand is uh, kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Oh, my, uh, my back, I'm looking a bit dark here today, aren't I? <laughs> he says uh, as he gets to the end of the show. Oh, well, we're, we've, we're a little bit dark after the weekend here. All right, uh, we've got a couple of minutes for any final questions you may have. Uh, hello to Prod by Spider. Thank you for dropping on by. Bear said he learned something new today. Very cool. Question from Ashley. Can you change the directory of the packs to put them on a separate drive? No. Uh, I know. You can on GarageBand on Mac. On GarageBand on iOS, there's a currently no way. Unless there is, and if someone, if anyone knows, it would be someone like Jade Star <laughs> that would know how to do it. But no, I don't believe so. I don't believe that you can uh, you can set because that th you can actually can't identify these files anywhere. As opposed to things like the the GarageBand file transfer folder and all of your files here on iCloud Drive, you can actually see where they are. So you can see where they're even the ones on your iPad. You can see where your GarageBand file tra tra transfer folder is. You still can't change it or move it to anywhere else, which is a pain in the ass. Because I'd love to have my GarageBand file transfer folder on my iCloud Drive, but I can't put it there either. So I think we're getting there with some of the files options in iOS and some apps like LumaFusion, for instance, you can actually use uh, files on external storage, but I don't think GarageBand and most, I don't think Apple, native Apple apps will probably ever let you do that because they're all about the uh, user experience. And I think they would be worried that if they allowed you to do that, you'd uh, unplug the drive halfway through and it would crash and then you'd blame them or something like that. So sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it would be cool because you'd, you'd run out of, uh, you'd run out of uh, room. Uh, you can no longer get into YouTube studio using Chrome. Really? That's weird. Cause I've, I've been doing, let me just check on my phone. Cause I, I was able to do it on my phone like a couple of days ago. If they've removed that, I'm going to be a little bit annoyed because uh, it, it's something I use all the time. Cause there's some things you can't do on the YouTube app, like uh, your cards or managing end screens, monetization options. There's uh, there's things. Uh, so let's, uh, let me just try this studio dot YouTube, oh, studio dot YouTube dot com. We'll see if we get that same annoying dog or monkey. Um, da, da, da. Okay, so it's letting me here on the iPhone. It's letting me go continue to studio. Okay, so it's it's let me in on the phone, but I'll have to try it on the iPad. Maybe it's the iPad version that's uh, that's not there because the iPad version of Chrome is slightly different because it kind of has a few more desktop type things in, in there. But yeah, I can definitely get it. Like it's a pain in the butt to scroll around on, but you can actually go in here and uh, and access from studio.youtube.com. But you do have to hit the little button there that says continue to studio because it basically says, no, you should do this in the app. And I say, no, bad. 
They blocked it on iPad. Yeah, see, that sucks. Because iPad's where you'd want to be doing more of that. I mean, unless you're, I'm, I'm the weirdo that uses iPhone for everything. But yeah, that, that kind of sucks. Well, well, if they blocked it there, then it means that YouTube need to um, go and add cards and end screens and uh, all the stuff that they don't have on uh, the mobile app. They should add to it. Because if you're going to block off the only way to get around it, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, iCab Mobile. I've, I've used that. I, I used that a while ago when we were trying to release mobile, mobile-ly, um, release to DistroKid. I did try that, but um, I haven't used it for a while. So maybe I need to try it again. <laughs> they want you to buy a new iPad, do you reckon? Um, Betty says, I actually downloaded most packs, been looking for a good human singing voices for the keyboard to play with. Any recommendation? Human singing voices. Um, who was it? Was it Gregory O'Sullivan that was using some cool synth voice app? Uh, Gregory, if you're watching on the replay, mate, uh, can you let us know what you were using for that? And uh, I think, Jade, you've checked out a couple of sort of vocal synth type apps in the past. So uh, let us know if you've got any recommendations as well before we finish off here today. Um, uh, Michael says, what does getting 100,000 subs do? Uh, as best that I can see, not a whole lot. Uh, they, they will apparently send me a play button, a silver play button. I have to apply for that, I believe, uh, to do. Uh, but I don't know if there's anything else that, um, that it does. I don't think it, I don't think it, unlike a lot of things. So 1000 subscribers is what you need as well as 4,000 watch hours, watch time hours is what you need to join the YouTube partner program to monetize your channel, to start running ads and getting paid for YouTube. And then I think it's 10,000, you get the community tab, although they've reduced that now recently, meaning you can put community posts on there. Uh, so yeah, that what, once you get up, once you get everything in, and then, oh, there's um, memberships as well. I think that's at 10,000. So having a YouTube membership, which is sort of a separate thing. Um, Jade says pure synth has some nice voices for keys. I've done a video on it. There you go. Search Jade Star pure synth. <laughs> yeah, not a whole lot. I know. It gives me a warm feeling down in the cockles. That's what it does. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I uh, I appreciate you. Uh, all the links to everything we talked about, uh, the the apps that we talked about, and uh, all the other show notes are down in the description. Uh, and don't forget that if you are new to GarageBand or you're GarageBand curious, the, uh, the GarageBand Beginner's Guide uh, would make a good Christmas gift. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't follow through with that. It's like, oh, just in time for Christmas, just $10. No, but if you're interested, uh, head over to studiolivetoday.com slash courses, five hours, curated content. It's all good. Uh, there is Vocalist by Four Pockets too. Okay, cool. So there's, uh, there's, there's some options for you around a vocal voice synth type app. Oh, as you can tell by my voice, folks, it's been a, a long but good weekend here on the channel. So I do want to thank you all for being here, uh, for being with me across all of the different shows that we've done. We'll be back this week with a whole bunch more content, uh, of course. I'll be doing some more videos. I've got the separate stuff that I'm reviewing over the next week. And uh, I've actually got... bits of kit, uh, which I'll, I'll tease you with right here at the end of the show. I've got the iRig Stream Solo and the iRig Stream Pro. So I'll be checking these out very soon here on the channel. So they will be, because a lot of people are asking me about a device that's going to be good, that's not quite a mixer, but is a little bit better than an audio interface for, for doing things like live shows and gigs and live streams. So I will be, I, I came multimedia reached out and said, you want to check these out? And I said, I sure do. Cause I know a lot of you want a good option for streaming your music. That's going to be simple and uses your iPhone or your iPad. So we'll be playing around with those in the coming days as well. Thanks everyone for being here. As we say at the end of every show, please, in fact, Jasmine put it here on my certificate. Please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, and keep creating. Thanks, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.